Hello PBO Nation, PBO YouTube channel. I am Zach with the New York Malamars, and we are here with your Week 2 Sunset Pick'ems with Mr. Dozo. How'd you think the games went the first week? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Um, yeah, the games were really, really good, actually. There was a few standouts for me, um, but I really quite enjoyed some some dominant wins. Uh, well, at least one very dominant win. Um, yeah, it was really good. So we're going to get right into this. Uh, we have our week run results right here. We're looking at them. We didn't have too many blowouts. We did have one six zero. That was an unfortunate. It was there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, counterplay in the Hong Kong game. I don't believe it was just a straight sweep though. They kind of whittled the team down. But we had two only separated by you know one mon, two humble three O's. And then we have apparently one. I don't remember how this happened, but an OO. Is that did we not fill that in, or did both die at the end? I've just fixed it. If you reload the screen now, but don't don't worry about reloading. It was a three O, I think, to the caterpillars from memory. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I, looking at that, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Um, just looking at the results, it um, proves that the Jellisons are here. Um, they're here to play. I think Drew's gonna have to. He, he knows with that Sun team, he's going to have to um, be on his game because everyone's going to come after him. Um, but yeah, any any surprise was surprise results in there? Um, I think we what? picked Santa Cruz, but I think most people picked Tokyo Teddy Ursa. So I guess that the league considered that an upset. I believe you and me both agreed that Sa that Santa Cruz would probably win that. Um, yeah, that was that was that was a straight fifty fifty almost for us fifty one forty nine. I think Helsinki was an upset over. We had to have them twelfth in the power rankings, so that was an upset over Sin City Sableye, who was ranked a lot higher. I don't remember who yeah. we picked exactly, but based on power rankings, Helsinki was an upset. Um, we got Orlando Magic Cups. They um, of course got away with that one zero win over the Bell Sprouts. Um, we I think we were on the Bell Sprouts, but was very was like the cups quality of player and uh wouldn't and this rain wouldn't surprise me if they got it done um chimchars i expected that win um i know i the gold dango champions have the gold dango champions have um changed made a few trades um for week three i believe but they don't really change a lot um who else Adelaide versus Nevada was outstanding. I really enjoyed that game. Um, I don't know if that's just because I was pretty invested in it because I have two guys that I know in that match. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty good. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Let's get right into it. No, no more time to waste. Well, this is a big game. We got uh, somebody down from the old Unova division. Uh, so a high-level player in Sin City against... Who might end up this a championship contender probably for what we saw in the changes they made to their team. We can't go over the original power rankings. This might uh, this is a high power game right here, Dozo. What do you think about it? Sorry, I was just a little bit uh, preoccupied. Um, this game is going to be a really good one. I I am I can see a lot of strengths on both sides, but I can tell you now, great task and. Flygon are going to have a game. This is going to be a, a, a rough one, especially if, if um, Nevada decides to sneak some webs in there somehow, um, taking away that big speed boost advantage for, well, really only walking wake. Um, but the two chlorophyll mons. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else, much else to say. Like, he's got the... the Volcanian looks really, really solid here because it's just such a good defensive wall. Uh, water absorbed to stop hydro steam. It's um, and then you've got the big, the big mon. I think could actually be a real pain in the backside to switch into. Could actually be uh, Sawsbuck. Mm -hmm. But Trick Room is definitely, definitely an option here. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Trick Room is definitely an option. Um, but yeah, I just see Flygon having no switch ins at all. Like yeah, well, Flygon. We talked about that in the team review, right? There's no real ground resist on this team at all. And you're yeah. fighting Great Tusk. So, 
I mean, and then you got the best scissor check in the history of the world with Volcanion. And you also have Roaring Moon in the Sun. So Yeah, we, that's, that's another one. That's a, that's a big one there. This is, uh, okay, well, in, in, on Rip, this really looks like a really huge advantage for Nevada Caterpies, but let's see what Sin City has to his advantage. So like most weeks, there's not a, there's not a great, anything great that can be done with Raging Bolts, right? Because, you know, at best we bring Sylveon as a check all special wall, but Bolt can just set up. If it gets one calm mind off and then Sylveon comes in, it doesn't really want to take the the Thunderbolt into the uh, Thunderclap, probably. I have to do the numbers on that, but... So that's an advantage, because the ground types don't want to switch into Draco. And Reggie Steel still doesn't want to take the Thunderbolts over and over again, right? So that's going to be yeah. most weeks, because Raging Bolt is crazy. And is there a real gouging fire check here? Not if it's set up, right? There's nothing that can really stop gouging fire yeah. in, if it gets a Dragon Dance up. Now, it has to do that. And then what's our walking wake check? Is oh, so we have a, an absolute water stopper in um, Volcanion. Volcanion, and then we have an absolute dragon stopper in Sylveon. So it's going to make it hard to be Specs or Scarf in this game, right? So maybe it's mm -hmm. Life Orb, maybe it's Sub, something of that nature. Sub, sub, like a Sub Lefties, or a I'm saying uh, the chance for a okay. An expert belt or or an eye orb would be would be all right. Um, I can I I I know the guys that the Caterpies prep with, and I can tell you right now that Grafai I pick up for him is going to be um, rather solid. I would not be surprised. Well, I will be I will be surprised if Grafai is not changing the weather. Mm -hmm. I I will wholesomely say that right now. I I will be very surprised if Grafai does not change the weather. So what I what I'm seeing yeah what I'm seeing when I look at this because because like Nevada has Great Tusk and Roaring Moon who are gonna get boosts from the sun too like this yeah. has got to be eighty five fifteen Nevada I'm gonna give him fifteen because if Gouging Fire gets set up it can win I don't think does anything have screens on Sin City I believe the Antsy would get screens. If you set the gouging fire up behind the screens, it sh it probably can win. Yeah. Um, because they, like they they don't. And again, this is the ch this is the uh, case most weeks with gouging fire, right? If it gets set up, it can definitely win the game just with like heat crash and earthquake. But I just I just there's no there's like in the rain with Sylveon should get weather ball right. Uh, that Sorry. I don't know. I do not know. In the sun, I presume it would, because doesn't like don't the other ones get it? Maybe I'm wrong. No, I might not get it. Even even though, if Sylveon got weather ball, like hyper voice into weather ball, and it doesn't even have to be offensive, absolutely tears through this team. Nothing yeah. switches into a uh, weather ball or a hyper voice well outside nine tails. Um, the poison type is neutral to it. It is going to be a very tough game. Um, I do think Ursaluna could do some damage, but again, Great Tusk isn't yep. there. Um, maybe, it, it, it's going to be rough. But maybe Sin same, City just maybe, leads Ursaluna and just attacks. Yeah, so, yeah. I think a Toxic Spike could go a long way from from the um, Skunk Tank, but saying that, um, Grafai Eye with probably a, it was a really good yep. pivot here. On this um, one, I feel like we got. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 85-15 on this, just because I respect Gouging Fire and Raging Bolt. But Caterpies is a go, massive favorite in this game to me. I'm gonna go 75-25, just purely because a Walking Wake, um, a Gouging Fire, and a Raging Bolt can really run away with the game. Um, if he can, if he can manage to break down Volcanion, then. Um, then we're looking at a really struggling to switch into steam eruption. Yep. So the, the, the hydro steam. Okay, so anyway, look, definitely in Caterpie's favor this week. Yeah, yeah, go on Caterpie's. And okay. just the talents of the player himself. Yep. Okay, next up we have the Arbelievas against the Rock Ruffs. These are uh, Arbelievas coming off. A tough loss, but played well. But he played maybe the best team, if not one of the best teams in the league. 
And I believe Rock Ruffs showed that this unconventional team is good. I thought it was good in preseason, even though it doesn't have some of the standard draft league uh, tropes. But uh, what are we thinking about this game, Dozo? Interesting you said that about uh, the Arbor Leavers. I actually believe the Arbor Leavers were in full control of that game last week. And it was one or two turns where um, the Caterpies were able to go was snag a win off a prediction. Uh, off, off an overpredict from from uh, Jace and the Arbor Leavers. Um So I'm really looking forward to this one. I, I think um, Clefable is a really solid map one in this matchup. Obviously, there is a Rev of Room that can just run away with it. Um, Bronzong's really nice there to stop that. Um, I don't actually... Like a Bronzong late with... Like an Iron Defense Bronzong could be nice, but I think just a standard Bronzong, just some doing Bronzong things would be solid. Um, with the Oxy's speed there, it makes it hard for Blaziken um, to really get enough speed. Uh, I think a bulky Ogre Pond could be really dangerous. Um, there's Mons on both sides. The thing is that Skeledurge, I believe Skeledurge is better in this game than Clefable is, as much as I said I like Clefable in this matchup. Yeah. Um, but there is a whole Ivy Cudgel there as well, a Luster Purge. It's going to be an interesting game. I, I think, think if I Jason think Umbre- on his skill, I think Umbreon looks really, really strong in this game. Yes, yes, I, I do as well. Like a Toxic um, foul play is really solid. Like nothing really. The only one that comes in on Toxic, ironically, is Reverberant. Yeah, and that's and, just getting foul and it played. Gets foul played. Yeah. So that is interesting. Mandibuzz doesn't want a Toxic. Uh, Skeletor just loses I, to Umbreon on Rip. Like it's never I could done. actually see like a sub on Umbreon being very handy. It's just yep. fitting the sub in. Like, what are you, what are you subbing out for sub? Because if he can get have a sub up on a toxic, like a toxic channel where he's slower, he can get that sub up. He yeah. might be, and, and then yeah. enforcing in say a Deoxys, forcing in a um, the gay horse. What's it called? Keldeo. Yeah. It could very well drop off a big um, toxic or a foul play into, into something like those. The question I have is if uh, if Oracorio does enough with Revelation Dance just as a ghost type to Skeledurge, can it just set up and win this game? Yeah, that's um, that's definitely that's definitely a, a threat. I'm just going to run the calc actually while we're while we're, while you're chatting away. And and unfortunately, I don't think it can tear a fairy because it doesn't have a ghost move except for Revelation Dance. So it no, have I believe to be... it, I believe it's Terra Ghost if it yeah. comes, or, or maybe even maybe even Terra Steel. So but Terra if, Ghost. If it can take care of the Skeledurge, maybe it's. Uh... It might be able to get through Mandy, but it just has to not get toxic. So maybe if it's just Ghost move. So, Sub, Max, Quiver Timid, Dance, Max Roost. Max, Timid Max Special Attack is 2-hit KO on Skeletor. Skeletor needs to run heavy uh, leftovers to live it. But if yeah. Jace gets up rocks, then it's just dead. And yes. then I believe after that, Steel Terror is absolutely phenomenal for him. Outside yeah. of the Landorus, he needs to get Landorus in range. Um, so that that's quite interesting. Um, I, I could see a, a world that tailwind on um, Killer Wattrel. Like, tell me really here what wants to take. Say if he went Terra flying with a tailwind. What really wants to take a modest Terra blast into Thunderbolt? Not yeah. a lot. I think Landers. So yeah, I think Landers could be strong here. Um, yes, we have. Uh, we have one of the Pokemon that is susceptible to my my old school gravity strategy. So if our believers thinks that Bronzong automatically checks Landorus and switches in on gravity, we suddenly have just killed two things with Earthquake. So Rockruffs, I'm sorry if you were planning to do that, but you know I got to analyze the game openly. Um, that is a legendary set. Uh, Ogre Pond is really strong here. It's Ogre Pond. It's always strong. But again, if it gets uh, Trailblaze up. Trailblaze, U-turn, Ivy Cudgel, Swords Dance, like just U-turn out if the uh, on the Meowskarat if it switches in. Probably beats everything if it gets set up in the right spot. I don't know what actually beats what I just said. 
Um, so that might be a set that uh, Rock Ruffs has to look out for. Just set up Ogre Pond, but dropping the the other coverage move just for U-turn. Yeah, it's really funny you said that, that. That's that's the set I I, I think. It, and Lando doesn't actually have to run any bolt uh, any speed. The way that Jason speed is, uh, Lando at speeds low tier stuff that needs way too much speed to maybe at speed some other yep. stuff. Yeah. So it's really interesting there. I think on the face of it, I see more good sets. For Arbeliva. I think Umbreon's really good. I think uh, Oracorio has a couple of scenarios where if there's some chip, it wins. I think Ogrepan, again, if it gets one turn, it can probably win. Blaziken looks really strong. Again, if it gets a speed boost up. If it switches in, something has to switch. They try to switch to Deoxys. You protect. You knock off. Maybe that kills if it's Life Orb. I'd have to look at it. And then... There's only so many things that Skeledurge can check, right? So if it's not Spadef, it's going to straight up lose to Oracorio. So, yeah. again, it can't it can't Will-O-Wisp Blaziken. So Blaziken knocks it off, and then it, maybe it's Earthquake, knock off, close combat. You don't seem to really need a fire move for anything. So I think I like Arbeliva. It's not a big advantage. I think maybe like... 60 40 55 i'm gonna go yeah. i'm gonna go 60 40 because i just gave you like yeah. four really good sets and yeah, i don't I'm see 60 40 as well yeah like an earthquake on what see lando is probably your obvious switch into blaziken but lando is not taking multiple choice banded no. um even if it and flavor. again it lando just switches in on a on a swords dance it's just dead Instantly. Floor just, I think floor just is, a, is absolutely essential and key for yeah, keeping... With, with, uh, yeah, without floor just, he cannot, he cannot beat Umbreon without floor just. Maybe, well, Keldeo could do something, but, like, it still doesn't want to stay in. I think the hard bit here for the Rock Ruffs is I feel that they need Deoxys and Miascarada for damage. I believe they, that Lando comes just about every week anyway. Then it's rough because then I think they need Skeledurge. I think that uh, you're running a Terra Captain like River Vroom. I think you need that. Then all of a sudden you're stuck between. So there's five slots. You're stuck between Forges, Mana Buzz, and um, Keldeo. And I guess I guess Avalug. But all four of those, two of them options are their are their default options. So if Jason brings uh, Toad Scroll with you know with some some spikes, if he brings Stealth Rocks on. Um, on Bronzong, looks like it could be a rough game. And I don't like Arbok in the game per se, but Arbok does have some ability in the game. Throwing around Toxics or Glares, or it's got Sucker Punch as well. Intimidates handy. There's just, there's a lot of things that could happen in this matchup. But yep. yeah, I'm going to be with you 60 40. Okay. So we're on. We our haven't believers. even spoken about. We didn't even speak about Luster Purge. Yeah, I th I still think I think I think Latios, Latios I don't think has a great set only because I'm Don't pretty sure Floor just can always switch in, and then take probably even with the Spadef drop it can probably take two because it would be Spadef right, and then it it yeah. gets to Baton Pass out like it can only do that so many times. But if you're not yeah, Specs, it's, it's probably it's, not doing that much damage. And then if you're Specs, he's just gonna switch to Mandy Buzz. If it's going to baton pass, well, I think Soldier is probably best option. Like Flip Turn, yeah. Draco, Luster, and like Recover or something. Yeah. Um, or Thunder Wave even. Um, if it does Flip Turn out, if it, if it does baton pass out, it will negative pass stats. That is allowed. Yeah. It, like, yeah. it will negative pass um, that Spadef drop. So all of a sudden, that makes Oricorio, it makes Killer Watch rule. Yeah. That much more threatening, even a um, defensive Clefable. But anyway, let's move so, on. We've, we've, we've spent so long on uh, this matchup. And now we have the Syracuse Snorlax and the Santa Cruz Swadaloon. Swadaloon's number one ranked team. Uh, it was a close game with Kuma. Uh, Kuma did. I'm not going to say he threw at the end. I just think he made he made the slightly sub less optimal play, and Santa Cruz was able to take take advantage of. Positioning is really important in Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen, so he left something out that couldn't damage Dragonite. Dragonite came out, got the Dragon Dance up, and the game was over. Uh, it's not always the best. You have to think about what happens after you kill the Pokemon before you even send out something to kill it. You have to know that the setup sweeper is there and you cannot damage it. 
So that's what happened to Kuma last week. Swaloons made the correct call. Syracuse, um, I feel like he's still getting his feet wet in this division. He was a little uh, outplayed in the last game, even though he has a high talent level. We talked about how the synergy of his team might not quite fit together. So he's definitely the underdog this week. And we do have Overquill on the other side to kind of damage his best guy. But Spectre, with Spectre, there's always a way, though. So what do you think about this one, Dozo? I, yeah, I fully agree um, with what you just mentioned. Overcool looking phenomenal. Um, with Overcool having special effects, special, sorry, stab boosted, super effective against Spectre Air, uh, Glow King, and Whimsicott until Whimsicott Terrors, obviously. Um, really, really solid. I think once Donfan removed from this game, I, I just think it's a Reggie Lucky Choice Specs game. I just, Choice Specs, full switch, and just pivot, 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 pivot. Like this, it's just, it is what it is. I'm bringing, I'm bringing Cryogonal. I'm bringing a big spit F boy Cryogonal, probably Terra Steel, um, as my rapid spinner. Um, takes pretty much anything that he wants to throw at him. Even a Cryogonal with um, an Iron Defense, if he wanted to run that. I thought we've seen that run on some recent YouTube leagues. Um, but yeah, like. Reggie Alecki just runs a train on this team because Gudra can only take so much. There's no witch, wish support in the team. Uh, Dragonite, late if Spectre Air is gone. Extreme Speed looks phenomenal. Um, but saying that, as you just mentioned, the Spectre Air is there and there is um, you can't disrespect that. Yeah, I think on Rip, we know Swal Swaloons has the best team in this division, probably. Uh, so most of the weeks, it's going to look like he's going to win. What can Snorlax do? Snorlax needs to utilize Whimsicott Encore in this game. Because there's so many setup things in this game. If he can come in at the right time on Dragonite, Valiant, even Corviknight, uh, the Ogre Pond, the Milotic when it recovers, he can be extremely annoying with Whimsicott in this game. I don't know what Terra Whimsicott does. I've honestly never seen it. I don't know if that even matters. I, I guess you get out of the typing for whatever reason, but... That seems like something that, if utilized right, could really frustrate a lot of these sweepers. Um, I've seen Mudshot on Spectrier was used against me when I used Incineroar as a check for it. It does a decent amount of damage to something that's weak to it because it's still a Spectrier. So if the yeah. Ogre, if the Overquill is not AV, it's not going to have that many switch-ins as we think that it does if... Snorlax knows if he runs Sub, Nasty Plot, Mud Shot, Shadow Ball. That set will quickly wear down the Overquill. And once the Overquill is gone, now Spectre kind of cooks the team pretty quickly. Especially behind yeah, a Sub. Because no, nothing that switches in on... Maybe it's even Calm Mind. Nothing that wants to switch in on Spectre to take the hits is really threatening it back that much. Because guys, remember with Spectre, it's not a glass cannon. It has decent, like relatively decent bulk. So that would probably be my game plan. I'm setting up the spikes. I'm um, being annoying with... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Whimsicott. And I'm trying to set the table for Spectre. And I'm probably going to sub a lot. Or make things take my Shadow Ball. And if Snorlax gets some predictions right, even though he's probably at a disadvantage here... That's a pretty clear win path to me. Yeah, I'm 100% agree with you on that. I um, I, I believe Wimscott may come with Terry Ground, to tell you the truth, um, as much as that might suck against my Lodic in the short term. I think you're right with... Um, I think the spikes are very, very important. You can get a spikes damage on, on Overquill. I think that... The, Overquill's a big one. If it can get re removed that, there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity. Um, and as you mentioned, there is one set that I, I really I'm a big fan of that I thought was trash when I first seen it, but then I seen it in action. I've used it myself on for Spectria, so I will pass that set to the Snorlaxes if they want to DM me about it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open to pass oh, it. Sub disable. Um, really, really. No, no, it's close to that. Okay. But it's, um, it's 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 a real like it looks terrible, and then you're like, wait a second, that's really annoying. If you can get it going, but I think if um yeah they can remove the removal options yeah. um so cryogonal the big thing is cryogonal terra steel is a real pain in the backside so would recover yeah um I think Gudra is probably going to want to be 
maybe even bring in just a big defensive set, to tell you the truth. Like, a yeah. Gudra can really go in here with an yeah. eye-defense body press, yeah. but doesn't want to take a scold. I think that, so, yeah, while I'm, I'm looking at this to... also, I think Rotom Frost, Terra, because I don't think that the Whimsicott needs to Terra. Rotom Frost, Terra into the ground is Gliscor with Scarf. Again, if you predict right, that gives you more switches into Spectre. That gives you more switches into Samurai to do the Ceaseless Edges. Which, um, again, the, the Dark Resist... I mean, you have Valiant here, but it doesn't really want to switch into to Hasui and Samurai and take a hit, right? So Overquill, yeah. again, can only check so many things. So if it wants to be the Spectre check, it does not want to switch in on Samurai. So if you, you have... have to believe, you have yeah. to believe Corvin on is the defensive mom. I could say a bulky defensive... Um, or bulky defensive ish Dragonite with extreme speed. Very, I could very easily say that. Yeah, if you ran, if you run special Dragonite defensive, like whatever defensive set you need with Draco and Thunder Wave, that would really piss off this team because then Don Fan can't really come in on it because it doesn't want to take yeah. the Dracos and then you're just Thunder Waving the whole team. That could be really annoying. Uh, I'm going to go with Santa Cruz. I know I didn't talk about many of their sets, but their guys are just, like, better. There's all kinds of things you can do. Swords Dance yeah. Booster Speed here is good because the real check is Glow King, who usually can't take the knockoff. So if you're running knockoff, close combat, booster speed, and then maybe just Moon Blast to cover the Don fan. If you're not getting, like, Flame Bodied by Talon Flame, that set's a pretty easy sweep in this game. And that's why the Whimsicott's important, so that that doesn't happen. Uh, but that the most basic sets for Swadaloon kind of win this game. Regular Dragon Dance, Dragonite, even though we talked about the other set it could be. But regular Dragon Dance with just like Earthquake and Dragon Move and Ice Spinner destroy this team. Um, yeah. So it's Tear, what's the Fire Resist on this team? So there's not a really great Fire Resist. Gujra's a check all special wall. But say they lead, uh, you know, Specs, Eruption, Hasui, and Samurai. There's not really a great option for that other than it, yeah. something that outspeeds it. So nothing, Glow King is a big special wall, but it's not going to keep taking Eruptions, right? So even just Scarf Eruption as a lead will do a ton yeah. of damage to all of these Pokemon. So Swadaloon has way more advantages, so I'm going to go with them 65-35. But I think I came, just off the top of my head, I came up with some real ways that Snorlaxes can win. He just has to play really well. Yeah, 100% agree. 100% agree. I'm going to go 60 40 um, with the Santa Cruz squad loans. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Here we go. Okay, we got one of the ones we got wrong last week. We did not pick Rain last week. We have Orlando Magic Harps versus Sh Chicago Chimchars. Okay, Dozo, what uh, do you think uh, about my Rain brethren, the Orlando Magic Harp? Uh, again, I don't, like, I don't like me some Rain. But a weather war is interesting, um, and it's like, and it's not like a like you know when you go sand and water rain, you're like, oh, sand's always going to win, or oh, rain's always going to win, and then you're like, same with sun usually. Um, it's quite interesting. I think Zapdos into this team looks phenomenal with weather ball offensive. Zapdos looks with weather ball thunder hurricane. There's just no switch to it. Um, even Ting Lu's not wanting to take that for long periods of time. Um, I really like Cinderace with Super Fang, like a utility sort of set this week. For the Chimchars, the Iron Boulder looks absolutely frightening, terrifying to me because it can run boost of speed and stab rock with uh, close combat coverage is going to be absolutely tearing holes into the Chimchars. We do agree. Yeah, when I, for, first thing I see when I look at the, uh, just on the Chimchar side, uh, we talked about there's no ground type on the um, Magikarps at all. So, you know, yeah. Terra Fairy, Electrode, doing some damage. You could just move around the field for free. Could be Terra Ice if they want to do some more damage to the Amoongus. But it's not as good as, as a suing electro because if you can't stop a terra electrode from vaulting around the field it just it makes it hard to win in the end game we saw that uh you you may see that in the match of the week in stargazer this week you'll see hasui and samrat against spectrier with that's a plug for the uh nightmare and orange game that's coming up but that's something i see off the top 
Backscalibur checks. Uh, Weezing is pretty good. It means it pretty much has to run Iron Head or it just loses to Weezing Galar straight up. And it probably needs an SD plus like expert belt to kill it. I remember these cows because I've done it before. I don't even know if SD Iron Head kills Weezing Galar in one hit. Uh, Archaladon is also a really good check because it gets the defense boost. So it pretty much stops it from being able to run Scale Shot. Uh, if it's defense invested Archaladon, I don't think Glaive Rush without a, even a Choice Band Glaive Rush might not two hit KO and it'll it'll KO it back. Um, Cinderace. Cinderace is kind of stuffed by Pelipper unless it has a move I don't remember. But it can't really damage defensive Pelipper in any meaningful way off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, Electro Ball would be pretty terrifying. Does it have it? Does it have Electro Ball? Yeah, it has Electro Ball. It's a okay. soft plant. That's okay. That's what I was talking. That's why Dozo's here because that's what I said. Unless it has some move, I just don't remember. So Electro Ball. It's there like, you go, Chimchars. Put put Electro Ball on these on the Cinderace. It's like when uh, I've, I've I've seen Neascaradas beat Zapdos's with um with Power Gem. I'm yeah. Like, uh, yes, I've I, I've done that before too. Yeah. Um. But there's nothing. What's what stops Barrascuta here? Okay, nothing. Uh, oh, it, nothing stops Barrascuta, so that's going to be an issue, right? So if we're running close combat, like just Life Orb Barrascuta kind of wins with the rain up. It flip turns on Ting Lu. It Choice Ban. Choice Ban would definitely kill uh, Empoleon. So maybe we need Shuka and whatever the fighting berry is. Choppel Empoleon in yeah. this game. Um, Couple and Polly makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but the fact we have no nothing to stop Barrascuta is is bad. That's very very bad. Um, what stops Archaladon really here? Ting Lu is a pretty good check. Ting Lu is a really good Archaladon check. So we're good there. Yeah. Um, not not if, not if it gets stamina boost. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it can it can probably switch in and then ruination it. And then yeah. just get it low, and then any special attack will kill it. As somebody who has Archaladon, Ooh. if it's not the AV set, it has very low special bulk. So you could probably just go into, like, uh, any of the special attacks. Like, Terror Blast Fairy from Electro probably does, like, 40 off the top of my head, mm -hmm. I would guess. There's a world here that Lilligan could actually do some damage. Um, with a Quiver Dance up, I don't know how well Zapdos is going to want to take him a Terra Rock. It um, won't. And it'll yeah, it won't. It all just depends. Um, again, once Barris, Barris Scoot is the big one. If if the rain is removed, then that Lilligan set really goes well. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the hail setter beats the rain setter uh, with freeze dry, of course. Um, but yeah, it's a t I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bet against Orlando. They just they proved to me last week how good they can be. Yeah, I think I like. Uh, I think either team could win this game. Again, it depends on. The secret to playing a weather team, uh, and Chimchars isn't a weather team, right? But the secret, if you're going to try to win a game with weather, is you cannot, cannot let the weather setter die until the late game. You cannot. If you're going to let it die, you must know you will win in the next five turns. You must. That's you right. never sack it at the beginning of the game. It, it always makes you lose from ELO 1000 up to ELO 1900. So... So if Orlando keeps the Pelipper to the end of the game and has the Barrascuta till the end of the game, there's no way Chimchars can survive that over time, because Baxcalibur would have to Dragon Dance four times to outspeed the at least three, maybe four times to outspeed Barrascuta in the rain. So it's always going to be able to close combat it and do a ton of damage. If it's banned close combat, it, it probably kills the Baxcalibur if it's not behind screens just from full health, even if it's max HP. Barrascuta is actually really strong. Um, Do we think Jolteon's coming this game? Which one? I thought, I thought Jolteon's coming this game as the Terra it, Captain. It has to. I think it has to. It's because if not, it's just so free to run Terra Ice Electrode into this team. There's just no punishment yeah. for it at all. So I think it has to come. Uh, Barrescu is not a Terra Captain, remember. It can't. So, no, no, no. I'll yeah. tell you who does look absolutely now that I'm just, just sitting here just peering at the game. Could be more of a pest. Um with a good Amoongus and um well, even though Amoongus I don't think looks great in this game because of the ice threats. 
uh, but like wheezing and stuff. I think a first impression with the bug uh, is it silver powder or whatever it's called, whatever yeah. item it is. Low kicks would be good. very very annoying for low kicks because yeah. like it really wants to come in and, and it's an electro. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, my computer ran out of disk space in the middle of the recording with Dozo, but thanks to the power of movie magic, we are back here giving the final thoughts on the rain game. Uh, we went 55-45 in favor of the Magic Harps. There's nothing to really stop the Barracuda. There's not an excellent answer to the Arch Aladon if Ting Lu gets low. Honestly, it could be max defense Arch Aladon and just body press it. So... Definitely in the favor of Orlando, maybe even 60-40. But, you know, we they do have the snow option, and Baxcalibur is really good. So 55-45 Magikarp. Let's move on to Champions against Bell Sprouts. I think this is a good week for the Champions. The Bell Sprouts outside of offensive Gliscor don't have a great way to take advantage of the all the shared weaknesses from Golden Go. There's no stab fighting moves, and our best fighting attack is probably Focus Blast on... Iron Crown, which is famously unreliable, same thing. You could have Hammer Arm or Brick Break on Physical Thunderous, which would be interesting. But again, probably not Thunderous's best set. And then Claude Sire is still right there. Uh, Golden Go, pretty good in this game because the Dark type is Grim Snarl, so the combination of Shadow Ball and uh, Make It Rain, pretty devastating for the Bell Sprouts. Uh, Tentacruel has no reliable recovery, so it can only come in on so many Shadow Balls. So whether it's Specs, Golden Go, just shooting off Shadow Balls, over time will wear down most of the team other than Wo Chien. But you probably need the Wo Chien to try to check uh, a Specs Kiram, which is kind of devastating in this game, as it is most weeks, but it's devastating in this game. Physical doesn't look quite as good because it's probably not as good into Appleton. Uh, Blood Moon, as almost always, has no checks, nothing that can really do anything. Again, Wo Chien spread thin. If it's coming in to try to check Blood Moon, it's not going to check Golden Go as well. So, I like the combination of special offense. We may see three very strong special attackers, and then maybe Claude Sire with Decidueye to try to hold the team together. Zyrude looks pretty good. So just U-turn spam is decent against this team. I don't think Petron has a great role this week other than checking Zyrude, so it might not come. So if you have the combination of just dark move, grass move, U-turn, and then maybe set up, it's pretty devastating into this team. Uh, on the other side, you know, we have some advantages. There's no fairy, right? So Dracos are free into the champion's team. Even just physical, maybe physical Dragapult, sub-Dragapult, just Dragon Darts with Will-O-Wisp. Pretty good. Should, in theory, be able to beat the Gambit, especially if it's behind a sub. Uh, and can just run sub, Dragon Darts, Fire Move, and Shadow Ball, even if it wants to. So mixed, Drag mixed Dragapult, probably pretty good in this game. Uh, I said earlier I like the setup Gliscor outside of the obvious Ditto being there. But uh, setup Gliscor is pretty tough for this team to deal with, even just with acrobatics for the Decidueye. We could fling the Toxic Orb. We could just keep it because plus two acrobatics probably kills because it's four times effective on Decidueye anyway. Uh, but with all that being said, I like the Dragapult set in this game. I think that there's a good... There might be a good physical Thunderous set. There might be a good... Set up Grim Snarl set that's not screens because it does have fighting coverage. And then Appleton probably has to be there to try to, just in case it's physical, Dragon Dance Kiram. Uh, but until I see, even though I think he has a pretty good match this week, until I see more from the champions, I'm going to go Bell Sprouts 55 45 in this game. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of play from the champions, so even though they have some advantages here, I'm going to go with the more balanced team. And uh, the team I've seen a little bit more from so far. Okay, we got Hong Kong against Jellicence. Hong Kong, like the champions, has been a low-ranked team. But I, I think they have a lot of good matchups this week. I think Tornadus looks really good. Nothing really can take Hurricane. There's no flying resist outside of Scormory, which has the Fortress Syndrome of not being a real resist. And then Tornadus has Heat Wave anyways. 
So if this is just, you know, hurricane, heat wave, U-turn, nasty plot, or really anything that has hurricane on it, as long as he hits the hurricane, it's pretty devastating for this team. There's no natural ghost, so set up Terrapagos is absolutely on the board against Skarmory. Being the steel type means it's it's very susceptible to special normal offense. So we could easily see a Calm Mind, Rock Polish, Calm Mind, Rest Talk, Terrapagos. That's quite a good matchup. Iron Hands, again, as this is the case most weeks, devastates this team. You throw this out with Booster Energy in the middle of the game, especially if Skarmory is trying to check Tornadus and Terrapagos. And then it could just drain punch over and over again, right? Because the Psychic type is also a normal type, so it's neutral. Sneasler's not a real resist. Permarina is, doesn't even want to come in on it, and even then it has low physical defense unless it's a setup variant. So and it probably can't kill hands with... If it's the defensive variant, it's not going to kill hands with one Moonblast, right? And uh, Latias, you wouldn't switch hands in on Latias, right? So Latias would have to switch in on, in on hands... And it does not want to take uh, Fairy or Ice move from hands, which it'll be carrying at least one of those in this game. And then even a Drain Punch probably does decent damage. And Latios, excuse me, Latios is not killing hands back in one attack. So it would have to be able to survive another attack anyways. And then Dark Ride, the only uh, decent check. We could have AV Crocodile, which I think is a pretty good set in general. Uh, Primarina is an okay check if it's AV. If not, the Sludge Bombs are still going to do decent damage. And then uh, Dark Rider always just switch out to Toxapex anyways. So if you don't flip turn expecting that switch, then we're losing a lot of momentum there. So uh, Bundle has a great matchup. Bundle always has a great matchup. Uh, there's You might see just specially defensive Mew. Just to try to do something against Bundle. It could be AV hands instead of Booster, in which case it could come in, take the hit. And then just click Drain Punch every time. See what the switch in is at the beginning. Uh, but Helsinki's getting a few more points here because Bundle can always do something. But I think I'm going to go Hong Kong 60-40 in this game because all of his sometimes non-synergistic mons just happen to have nothing to really stop them in this game. So I think the special offense will be too much for Helsinki. And unless he's just... He'll need a lot of bulk in Latias and Prim and Snorlax to survive these attacks, but if they're not offensive, I don't know that they can outpace the Dark Rai, the Hands, and the Terrapagos on the way back. And here we go, we have the game of the week, in my opinion. Tokyo Teddy Ursas versus Whoopers. Uh, first thing I notice is that Hydrapple devastates Teddy Ursa, so he's got to figure out a way to get this thing off the field early, or it pretty much necessitates him bringing the Pheasantipity. Uh, but even then, you know, Hydrapple has Earth Power. It also has Earthquake. If he wants to assume it's AV or just Max, Badef, U-Turn, Roost, Pheasantipity. He could run any Hydrapple set. He could run AV. He could just run Life Orb Hydrapple here and just click, you know, and just click Draco into, you know, Earth Power. Whatever he wants to do, really. Hydrapple kind of runs away with this. Uh... There's not a phenomenal check to Kukwavel, assuming he has a plan to deal with a Lomomola. So just sub Kukwavel with setup is really annoying for a Lomomola. And then, same thing, it's like, Rotom Wash can switch in on it if it thinks it's an Aqua Step. But even fully defensive Rotom Wash is, it can only switch in a couple of times on close combats. And then Rotom Wash is also an easy switch back to Hydrapple. So that's a, it's a bad matchup for Tokyo, in my opinion. Uh, what what does Tokyo have in his favor? He's got Annihilate. Uh, there's no Ghost Resist that also resists fighting. And if Whoopers brings Incineroar, he really needs to bring non-Intimidate Incineroar because giving Annihilate a boost in this game will pretty much just win the game. Annihilate has huge special bulk, so wouldn't be surprised if it can survive a Choice Scarf, Moonblast... From Enamorous, and you'd figure this is Choice Scarf because it probably has to be Choice Scarf Mien Chao on the other side. So we probably aren't that afraid of Specs. And Annihilate also might be the best special wall for Hydrapple. Like if Hydrapple's low, you switch in Annihilate and maybe just Drain Punch it over and over again and hope you outlast it since it has to click Draco against you. Heatran, I think, is. Uh, 
decent, assuming they don't bring Slow King, which I don't know that they need Slow King this week, because it could be, uh, not, I guess with Chili, it's, it's pretty decent. It's kind of, a, it doesn't switch in that well on Rotom Wash, because he's probably going to want to Vault Switch out regardless, but I guess he could bring it. Uh, but again, that's something you don't want to get stuck out there against Ape. We probably see Scarf Mienshao from Tokyo Teddy Ursa, which is pretty good in this matchup, right? So again, there's not a great combination of knockoff, U-turn, fighting resist. So if Slow King wants to be Fizz Def and come in, then you're going to get U-turned into like Annihilate, and then you're giving Annihilate free turns to set up. So, and Garchomp... Has a decent matchup here, I think. Uh, it has to deal with Scarf and Amorous, which is going to be annoying for it clicking its moves. Like, if it wanted to be Choice Band, it can't just spam Earthquake. Because not only can something switch in on it defensively, but then it threatens it offensively. And because Enamorous has the Earth Power Moonblast coverage, if it's Air Balloon, uh, Heatran, or whatever, you know, if you get the guess wrong when you switch Heatran in, you just die. So, I think Fez is kind of a must-bring for Teddy Ursus in this game, although I don't know that it'll help him that much if he gets a couple of turns wrong, but you'd figure with the coverage that Whoopers has, you kind of need that to try to stop the spamming of the Dragon and Fairy moves in this game, because both of those things that Heatran is supposed to stop both have Earth Power, so, I don't think it's a good matchup for Teddy Ursa. He has setup capabilities to win and Annihilate and Garchomp. Uh, there could probably be some good subsets. There's a good Knackle Stack set here, I think, if Whoopers does not choose to bring a Covert Cloakmon. He doesn't have a stupendous way to break through this if it's not set up Enamorous. Right? Maybe it's just Terra Ghost Knackle Stack, so nothing can hit it, hit it super effectively. So I think Tokyo has a ch has a has some strong sets, but I think Whoopers the Hydrapple, if it doesn't go down early, is just gonna annoy Whoopers so much throughout this game. And then once Hyd if uh, if a turn gets wrong and we lose Pheasantipity and or Heatran, then we're just gonna spam Specs Moonblast. Excuse me, Scarf Moonblast for the whole game. So I'm gonna go Whoopers 60-40 in this game, but uh. Whoopers cannot get out of position, let Annihilate get a bulk up off, or let uh, Garchomp get an SD and Scale Shot off. Even just a Scale Shot could be pretty bad, assuming it has coverage, right? But uh, I think that's harder to position than just Appleton clicking a button or Enamorous clicking a button. So last game, we're going Wochester, 60-40 over Teddy Ursa. And that's the end of our video. We'll be back with week three, and we will not mess it up this time, ladies and gentlemen. We got you covered. But to all the PBO players and PBO fans, happy week two. Make sure you get them KOs.